Hi guys, welcome to another Learning Electronics Repair video. As fate would have it, the next job I have came into the workshop is this little satellite receiver. They use these a lot on bars around here because they can get uh, BBC and ITV, Channel 4, Channel 5. These are United Kingdom free to air channels on satellite. And for some strange reason, unlike all the other European countries like Germany, France and Italy and so on, who put their free-to-air channels on satellites that can be received all over Europe, so all their citizens or language speakers elsewhere can watch them. No, of course in the UK they stick them on the satellite where you can't receive the damn things once you're outside or very far outside the UK. Yeah, even though they're free. Uh, so that's just like some stupid UK thinking, but rather than bitching about it a lot of bars have these boxes and the reason they have these boxes is because they can receive the same channels from another satellite not the 28 east which is the sky uk in english free to air so these receive a satellite at 27.5 degrees west that has all the main english free to air channels on and there's no subscription because they're free channels anyway but we need a special receiver to receive them hence this thing so, lots of bars have these, and then they can put English TV on, basically. So, now you know what it is, I'll show you what's wrong with it. So, you switch this on, it powers up, it's saying boot, yeah, it's booting up. And if you give it a little while, it'll come to on, yeah. Now, the reason this is in the workshop is because it doesn't give a picture. But only on the HDMI, typical. So, if I plug into this SCART connector into the back of it, and I have to uh, just put the camera where you can see the picture, if we just uh, try and move it around and move my TV somewhere, there you go. One TV, yeah? So, I hope you can see it, we'll switch it on. And if I choose AV, which is obviously, this is plugged into the AV on the TV, We'll get a picture, so we can just go, let's see, AV, yeah, same signals we got the top corner there, yeah, if I, if I unplug it, I don't know if you can see it very well, if I unplug it and plug it back in, you'll actually see it boot up with a loading screen, but it's a bit better, maybe you can see it a bit better now, yeah. So on the AV connector, basically, this works, yeah, there you see, it's got a screen. So it's working, but if we put the HDMI in, I'll just disconnect this uh, one. Menu will come on in a minute, there you go. So I'll disconnect this and I'll connect the HDMI. Then we'll connect this to the TV. And this is the problem the bar says he has, no outputs on HDMI. Okay, so I'm on HDMI. Again, we select the source. Okay, and you see we have no picture, so there's no output on HDMI. I'll just plug it back in and let it boot up, but it won't work. So that's what's wrong with it. Now, the problem with these receivers, they're a bit hard to get hold of. They've brought out a new version, and for some reason the firmware for this satellite doesn't work properly. It doesn't scan the channels properly. So there's a kind of a demand for these old ones and the guy who owns it obviously in the bar would like to have it working. So there we go. I said fate was involved. So after the last job, which is an epic HDMI repair, what have I got? HDMI repair. <laughs> so there we are. The gods are against me or they would be if they existed. Yeah. But other than that now, it's just coincidence okay so let's see if we can figure out what's wrong with our satellite receiver and why we have no output on the hdmi so the first thing i noticed is that it seems a bit loose but i'm not sure if the entire circuit board is loose or just the socket so that's the first thing we'll look at so let's open this up optical uh, hdax 150 by the way is the model this is the first generation third generation ones that can't get the software working uh, for some reason okay so 
there we have it that's what's inside it's a circuit board and on the other side of the circuit board we have some components <laughs> as is normal yeah there so that's our thing so the first thing we need to have a look at is the hdmi connect and see whether or not it has a problem so i'll zoom down and i'll put the lead into it and let's see if it actually is loose okay we zoomed in so you can see it quite clearly and i don't think it's loose at all i think it's just a case well it's a little bit but i don't think that's the problem i think it's just a case that the board is waggling around a little bit inside it yeah i mean that does move in there okay so there's no obvious problem with the hdmi connector i do have i think this kind of connector here but let's start with some basic checks then let's see if we actually have a connection on all of the pins coming through the hdmi cable so the usual way then put a socket on the other end and then check all the pins from one end to the other for continuity this is not difficult it's a little bit fiddly just figure out which end we start at you can't see the meter but you'll hear it yeah one and so on so i'm just going to work all the way along these glasses are just falling off then across each one and see if i have continuity it's a little bit laborious so i'll do it off video i'll use some magnification and i'll show you if any of them are bad i didn't find any open circuit connections but what i do seem to have found is too many connections connecting to ground so i can just show you you can see it in here because i did this on the last video there you go so hdmi pin 2 is the shield that's ground 5 is a ground 8 is a ground 11 is a ground yeah and then the only other ground is on 17 you can see it down here so once we find whichever end pin 2 is and that's easy is whichever end the second one in is a ground that will tell us where pin 2 is yeah from this end it's a third one in so once we find out, we should be able to count them. One, two, three, four, and then five. Yeah, all connected to ground. Let's see how many we actually have on our connector. So first of all, we need to find out where pin two is. If we go to ground, we'll use the actual metal connection of here. So the second one in from one end or the other is ground. Well, it ain't that end, so it must be this end. So that's ground, yeah? So this is lane two, if you like, of the LVDS. So signal, ground, signal, okay? Lane one, signal, ground, signal, yeah? Lane zero, signal, ground, signal, yeah? And then we have the clock, signal, which has got a short on it, or close to a short, yeah? Ground, signal so it looks like one of the two pins of clock has got a short on it that one there yeah which is pin one two three four five six seven eight nine ten pin ten is grounded well pin 11 is actually grounded it reads zero on the meter yeah what's this one read almost short yeah so that's wrong then we shouldn't have any more grounds until this one so that should be ground five volts hot detect hot plug two signals two signals yeah so what appears to be wrong with this in fact we know what's wrong with this we've got an almost short to ground on one of the two clock signals uh, that, so that's why it isn't working the question is where is the short let's have a look just to make it clear and if you didn't see this then you should watch all you need to know about hdmi to fix stuff and you will understand this diagram but you will not have seen this particular problem before hence this video so what i was doing is i was trying to find which end was pin one and i did it by looking at the second pin in from both ends to see which one is connected to ground and once i find it I know where I am because on 18 there's a 5 volts 50 milliamps so this will never be connected to ground at least not on a working uh, HDMI port so 
the ones we found this one, I was going signal, ground, signal, signal, ground, signal, signal, ground, signal, and then it should be clock, ground, clock. And this clock is shorted to ground. That one, yeah? That's where the short to ground is. That's almost undeniably why it doesn't work, yeah? So we have a short from here to ground. I couldn't see any shorts on any of the other ones. There's no point in me testing if the hot plug signal and the rest is working because I need to figure out why I've got a short to ground on this pin. So now you've seen the diagram, we can follow it quite easily. Three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. So this is the pin that has a close to short on it. Uh, and it goes, you can see to here, through this connection, and then it goes off this way. So if we have to see where it goes, it actually goes to this component. This is almost, is this? Yeah, that must be like a zero ohm link by the looks of it. It's three to ground from both ends. And that then goes down here to this chip. I think it's this one. Yeah. So that's what's generating, obviously, the signal, the clock signal. And it looks to me like the chip itself is faulty. It's that one. Yeah. The only way to prove it, it's quite simple, is to lift this pin on the chip. Or even actually probably easy, it's just to remove this link resistor here and check to see if the short is there. I'm, I'm confident it's in this chip, but we can do that. The chip, I've got the part number there. I doubt I'd find a data sheet for this, but I can certainly have a look, see if any of these numbers actually finds anything. I tried lifting the pin of the chip, but I just couldn't get it to do it. All I could do was bend it a little bit. I didn't have anything fine enough to get under there. So what I've done is instead I've just lifted one end of the resistor. So if you have a look now, we can just check to ground. So this is the end that goes to the chip. And we still have the low resistance there, okay? And we can just go to the other side and it's okay if we look at all the other signals they're fine it's just that one which has the short on it effectively so we've definitely got a problem with this chip i'm sure that only only goes to there i don't think it goes anywhere else underneath it it wouldn't make sense because this is the clock signal which is lvds so it wouldn't make sense for anything else to be on that connection to be honest we can confidently say then that the problem is this chip uh, and I've had a look and I can actually get these, look I just focus it, so it says 3M3510C then ALCAA. So if you have a look on AliExpress I can actually get these. This is the part on AliExpress, I mean they're a bit expensive but I had quoted the guy 45 euros to fix this and he was quite happy due to the difficulty of getting replacement ones anyway. I don't think you'll have any problem if I just charge you, yeah, if I charge you 50, I'll still make enough profit to make it worthwhile just changing the chip. And I'm pretty sure that will fix it, to be quite honest. So I'll get that ordered, and then you will no doubt see this again at some point in about a month's time. And we've learned a little bit more. So there we have it, guys. Faulty chip. And we pretty much proved that conclusively. I don't think this is a programmable device. I could be wrong because I can't find a data sheet, but this is some sort of non-volatile RAM or flash RAM chip. This is a 2.5 series EEPROM, so this will have the firmware. So because of that, I don't really see why this would be a programmable device, but you know, it's supposition, yeah, <laughs> as usually is the case. So, I guess the handful of you who clicked dislike on the previous video, all you need to know about HDMI to fix stuff, will probably click dislike again because I didn't fix it again. Although, like the last video, I've got a very good idea what the problem is. In fact, this one probably even more conclusively. And those of you who don't click dislike, well, that's probably because you actually learnt something useful from the video. And, you, you know, given the reality, we can't fix everything. But, yeah... That's something I didn't mention, I didn't really think about on the previous video. Check all the 
LVDS lines to ground to see if you have a short. So that's six LVDS lines and two clock lines. And once you know the order of them, it's quite easy to just go across. The reason I spotted this, by the way, is because while I was checking for continuity on all of the pins, I realised that I got more ground pins than I should have. I didn't count them, but I knew there was more than five. It turned out there were six. And once I knew I got more than five ground pins, I knew I got a short somewhere to ground, yeah? And after that, it was... Well, <laughs> the rest of it you've just seen, yeah? Okay, so that has got to be about the shortest ever for me. Maybe, which is a bit of a result in itself. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you know a little bit more about HDMI than you did before. Another tool in your toolbox next time you try and fix one of these sort of things. And I will see you all soon on another Learning Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now, guys.